Rated M for Mature. Who wouldn't want a better gun? These are literally people who answered to Adolf Hitler that you're shooting at in Sniper Elite 4, so let's shoot them extra hard. Here's some easy and gruesome ways to buff your weapon stats and build a rifle worthy of an elite sniper. Hello there and welcome to the channel. If you found this video, you probably quite like shooting Axis forces from a long way away in video games. It's one of gaming's best and most time-honoured activities, and it's particularly sumptuous in the wind direction simulating bullet drop physics environments of Sniper Elite 4. Firing a gun feels pretty magnificent here. Isn't that right, Carl? No time to admire the scenery. Gotta deal with Capo. Ah, he's, uh, he's busy. No props. Cool. Catch you later, big guy. Or whenever. But in an ironic spin on your old adversary Herr Hitler's prevalent philosophy, not all guns are created equal here. Spend a bit of time with one, taking off its challenges, and you can upgrade key areas on its performance, working your way towards a perfectly honed sports car of a weapon. If you're the kind of player with their eye on that authentic plus difficulty option, maxing out your favourite rifle before getting stuck in with that playthrough will really help improve your chances. And if challenge and ultra sim style gameplay aren't your thing, an upgraded weapon is just amazing fun. Here then are a few easy ways to tick off the challenges that will make your weapon truly elite. From handy locations that are well suited to getting them done, to techniques that take the guesswork away. Before we get into the nitty gritty, remember to subscribe to the channel to catch more Sniper Elite 4 content and all info on new releases, and turn on notifications to make life that bit easier. Now then, the shooting. Firstly, this is where weapon upgrades live. Within this menu, you can see a few key areas to upgrade, and mini challenges to complete in order to do so. They differ from rifle to rifle, but they can be broken down into a few broad groups, and we're starting with this entry on sound mask kills. If you want to increase the damage output of your M1903 Springfield or Lee Enfield No. 4, you're going to do a fair few of these. For the uninitiated, sound masking is a bit like stifling a fart with a tactical cough, only instead of watching the eyes of the people that you're sharing a lift with narrow in disgust and confusion, the end result here is, well, a good deal more visceral. There are sound masks dotted around every level, just look out for this icon on the HUD, if you're using a difficulty mode that permits a HUD of course, and also use your ears. Passing planes, antiquated machinery, it all covers up the noise of a sniper bullet tearing through the air and prevents anyone from hunting you down after you take the shot. Don't get me wrong, they'll still be alarmed, I mean, that man's head's come off but they won't know where to direct that primal fight or flight response. If you want to cheese it for a quick damage upgrade, Sansolini has an easy overlook here where you can pick off a few from this early vantage point when the plane passes overhead. My favourite though is the Reginino Viaduct, where the sound masks happen more frequently and where the enemies are as clueless to my presence as they are riddled with my bullets. Organ shots are another common demand for rifle upgrades. For the mastery skin, the M1903 Springfield wants you to shoot 20 people straight through the heart, although it's not plussed about whether or not you give love a bad name. The Mostin Nagant wants 10 liver shots to improve its stability, the Manlicker would like 20 testicle shots please for its mastery skin, and the Lee Enfield asks for 25 intestine shots, also for the mastery skin. Get 20 kidney shots and the Gewehr's mastery skin is yours, and my beloved Carcano, not to be upstaged, asks for 50 eye shots for its mastery skin. Obviously a working knowledge of human anatomy comes in handy here. It's easy enough to get those eye shots if you're at close range, especially if you're not averse to using a bit of empty lung. And the position of the testicles is not one of the human body's great mysteries. No, all those lower abdomen shots though do prove trickier. We find it helps to face your target squarely so as not to confuse matters by having a bullet enter their soft tissue on a diagonal, and there's also a bit of trial and error here, watching the x-ray kill cam to see how to adjust your shot. Hopefully using these tips you can better isolate the stomach, intestine and kidneys without having to buy an anatomical dummy and set it up in your gaming room, which truth be told does raise some eyebrows in our experience. Number three is ricochet shots, and five of them are required for upgrading the muzzle velocity of the Carabiner 98K. And these are pretty tricky to pull off compared to some of the other challenges. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. 
However, if your enemies are near hard surfaces and you aim at the right places, it won't take you long to rack up the required kills. Ricochet shots happen when the bullet meets a hard surface, bounces off it and then keeps going. Really advanced players can use this technique to pull off some absolutely mind-bending kills, but for the purposes of unlocking this weapon upgrade, you don't need to dust off that super string theory textbook. Just aim really close to a soldier's feet while they're standing on concrete or rock, and the bullet will make a sharp 180 up into the direction of their nether regions. It might take more than one shot to kill them, since you're only hitting them in their legs or... Well, let's not even think about where else, but observe where the first shot went, adjust your aim accordingly and keep at it until they're fallen. If you're playing on a difficulty that allows a HUD, so not Authentic Plus, you'll see that it's successfully registered as a ricochet shot here. Double kill! Mm, mm. Sorry, I've just had a yogurt. Mm, double kill. They're fun whenever you can get them, aren't they? And they also help you to upgrade your damage stat for the Carabina 98K and the zoom of your Manlika M1895 if you pull off enough of them, as well as the mastery skin for the Mosin Nagant. So let's look into the very complicated mechanics of this ancient and oft misunderstood art form. Alright, I'm joking. Obviously, you just need to shoot two people when one lines up behind the other. But there is a knack to actually getting them to do that, since this isn't a marching parade and they were probably told fairly early on during Nazi Soldier 101 that bunching up isn't a brilliant survival tactic. So what you want is a vantage point overlooking a doorway. They've only got one option when they're going through a doorway after all, haven't they? Although being high up in Sniper Elite always helps, here you don't actually want to be too high. The closer you are to level with your first target, the higher chance you've got of lining that bullet up with someone behind them, so stay relatively flat when going for these. Next up is prone kills, and although the idea of shooting people whilst laying down actually sounds easy to the point of just being lazy, there's a fair bit of planning involved to tick this one off and upgrade your zoom for the Gewehr 43 and the recoil of the Manlika. For starters, I don't know if you've ever actually tried to sneak up on someone while limiting your movements to a belly crawl, but if you have, you'll know that visibility's a bit limited down there. Unless you're atop a lovely vantage point, you can basically see some grass, a bit of dirt, and if you're lucky, a weevil and a worm or two. Prone kills are best ticked off in levels with lots of verticality then, like Bitanti Village, where you can park yourself in a prone position atop a hill and watch your enemies mill about below you. The next complication is that although you're harder to spot while prone, if someone does spot you, it takes that bit longer to get up and leg it somewhere else. So you really need to scout the area out first and make sure Ned the Nazi's not going to sneak up and tap you on the shoulder. Tap you on the shoulder, being a euphemism, for tear you to bits with automatic rifle fire. Lastly, it's distance shots and cumulative distance. Hitting these lofty targets will grant you more zoom for the Carcano and M1903 Springfield, better damage for the Gewehr, better muzzle velocity for the Mosin Nagant, and doing so is just all the fun. Making good on a shot from miles away is central to the fun of being a sniper, so taking it to the extreme means I'm just checking my calculations here. Extreme levels of fun. If you're new here, maybe you missed our previous videos on Sniper Elite for long shots, where you can pick up a bushel of S rank kills that'll unlock these pronto. The link's in the description down below if you want to check that out. And if for some reason you don't, suffice to say, your friend and mine, the Regilino Viaduct, is once again a fine choice for cheesing some distance kills. This chap to the far left of the bridge is well over 550 metres away from your vantage point at the start area. You know what to do. So those are a few weapon upgrade challenges to sharpen both your skills and your hardware. I mean, shooting 50 eyes out of their sockets is definitely fine if you get a weapon mastery skin out of it. Like, definitely fine. Tell us what the hardest of these challenges is in the comments below, give us a like if you liked it, and remember to subscribe and bosh that notification bell to get new videos from us as soon as we drop them. Catch you next time.